Okay, it looks like everyone's in and recording is starting. All right, we will call to order the Beverages Licensing Authority hearing on Wednesday, December 21st, 2022 at 3 p.m. Wonderful. Thank you, Chair Colifano. We'll begin with roll call. Member Absalom. Member Absalom, present. Vice Chair Carr. Uh, Chair, Vice Chair Carr, present. Chair Califano. Chair Califano, present. Member Roberts. Member Roberts, present. And Member Wallace. Member Wallace, present. Great. We will now begin with instructions for virtual hearing and rules of decorum. Our colleague, Caitlin Kellogg, will be showing those slides for us. Can you see that? Unfortunately, I am unable to see that. That's okay, I'll read them. I appreciate okay. that, thank you. No problem. This is the public participation at Beverage Licensing Authority and Cannabis Licensing Authority board meetings. The city has engaged with community members to co-create a vision for productive, meaningful, and inclusive civic conversations. This vision supports physical and emotional safety for community members, staff, and board and commission members, as well as democracy for people of all ages, identities, lived experiences, and political perspectives. More about this vision and the project's community engagement process can be found on our website, which is bouldercolorado.gov. The following are examples of rules of decorum found in the Boulder Revised Code and other guidelines that support this vision. These will be upheld during this meeting. All remarks and testimony shall be limited to matters related to city business. No participant shall make threats or use forms of intimidation against any person. Obscenity, racial epithets, and other speech and behavior that disrupts or otherwise impedes the ability to conduct the meeting are prohibited. Participants are required to sign up using only to use sign up to speak using the name they are commonly known by, and individuals must display their full name before being allowed to speak online. Currently, only audio testimony is permitted online unless you are here for something that's on the agenda, then you choose your camera, and everyone should have the ability to rename themselves. All right. Thank you, Caitlin. Continuing on into our agenda today is agenda item number one, approval of beverage licensing authority minutes for the November 16th, 2022 hearing. These inadvertently were left out of the packet for some reason, it did not combine. So we did email this as an agenda exhibit today and it is available on the beverage licensing authority uh, materials webpage. Thank you. Um, did any Board members have any edits or anything that needed changes to the minutes? I did not. Not seeing any. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Member Absalom will second. All in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Wallace, aye. Member Roberts, aye. Member Carr, aye. Minutes are approved. Thank you. Continuing on with hearing agenda issues from the licensing clerk, um, there is a notation that Chair Califano will need, be needing to leave at 5.30 p.m. today with Vice Chair Carr assuming the chair position for the remainder of the hearing. <coughs> agenda item number two, matters from the Boulder Police Department. We were notified that Officer Denning will be joining us, albeit he will be joining late. You want to come back to him? That would be up to the members of the authority. Yeah, I, I think we should just, when he gets here, we can move him into whatever, in between whatever agenda items we're currently on. Perfect, thank you. Agenda item number three, matters from the Responsible Association of Real Retailers, the RAR. I am not seeing um, Mr. Dewey with us um, at this time. I think we can treat that the same as we're doing with Officer Denning. Great, thank you. 
Agenda item number four, general public comments for future beverage licensing authority hearings. This is for a time for comments from the general public to comment for items uh, for future beverage licensing authority items. Uh, if you are here and would like to make public comment, please use the um, reactions button to raise your hand. If you are calling in from a cell phone, please hit star nine. Do we have any individuals that would like to make public comment? Chair Califano, I am not seeing anyone. Uh, I do for public not comment. either. I think we can move on to the next agenda item. Agenda item number five, show cause hearing concerning an alleged May 1st, 2022 violation and whether the beer and wine type lic liquor license held by Cafe Nostro Limited doing business as Cafe Soleil, 637 South Broadway, Unit R, Boulder, Colorado, 80305 should be suspended or revoked. I see we do have the licensee um, available. Which individual was that? Uh, that is uh, Suter. Suter, great. Are you represented by council today? Uh, looks like you're on mute. Okay. I am not represented by council today. Okay. Um, Kristen, can we get him sworn in and then I'll read the proceedings into the record? Yes. Suter, can I get you to raise your right hand and repeat after me? Okay. I state your name. I, Suter DeBose. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemn, solemnly swear or affirm. That the testimony I am about to provide. The testimony that I'm about to provide. To the beverage licensing authority today. To the beverage licensing authority today. Is true and accurate. Is true and accurate. Perfect. Thank you. Did we need to get name and address or anything? Um, I can definitely do that. Mr. Dubo, would you please state your name, spell your name, and give your address for the record? Yes. Uh, Suter Dubose, spelled S-U-T-E-R-D-U-B-O-S-E. -E. Address is 745 East South Boulder Road, Unit C-300, Louisville 80027. Great, thank you. And Mr. Dubose, since you're not represented by counsel, I'm going to go ahead and read the proceedings into the record. Okay. All right. This is a public hearing before the Beverage Licensing Authority of the City of Boulder to determine whether or not the license of Cafe Nostro uh, doing business as um, Cafe Soleil uh, with a license of uh, beer and wine shall be suspended or revoked on the basis of violations alleged in the order to show cause served upon the licensee and requiring the licensees present here today. Because this is a disciplinary proceeding, the authority shall not ask for or allow comment from members of the general public on the guilt of the licensee or the appropriate discipline to be imposed. The purpose of this hearing is to receive testimony presented by the city and by the licensee in order to enable this authority to make findings and to determine by a preponderance of the evidence whether or not the licensee has violated the various laws as alleged. If in the course of the hearing testimony or other evidence establishes the guilt of the licensee of a violation of some other law, rule, or regulation than those stated in the notice, the licensee shall be afforded a reasonable continuance upon any offer that evidence in defense, explanation, and mitigation is not then available to the licensee, but can be obtained within the period of a continuance not exceeded 10 or not to exceed 10 days. <clears throat> a record is being made of these proceedings. All testimony shall be given under oath. The rules of evidence and requirements of proof and procedure shall confirm to the extent practicable, er, practicable to those in civil non-jury cases, but when necessary to ascertain facts affecting the substantial rights of the public or of the licensee. 
the authority may receive and consider evidence not admissible under such rules if such evidence possesses probative value commonly accepted by reasonable and prudent persons in the conduct of their affairs. The rules of privilege required by law be or shall be respected in this proceeding, and the chair may exclude incompetent and unruly re repetitious evidence. The chair shall rule upon all questions and evidence canned procedure uh, subject to being overruled on motion sustained by a majority vote of those members of the authority present. Should a licensee wish to request a fine in lieu of active suspension days, they should notify the authority of this after a penalty is determined, if any, but before suspension posting is discussed, and the licensee should be prepared to supply an estimated per day suspension dollar amount for the authority's deliberations. Those who wish or those who desire to be heard shall identify themselves by stating their name, spelling their last name, and stating uh, the uh, pertinent address. They shall also be sworn by, sworn in by the board secretary. Um, is there any conflict of interest or ex parte communication from any of the board members? Member Califano, no. Member Absalom, no. Member Wallace, no. Member Roberts, no. All right, we can move forward um, with the stipulation of facts. Do we have a signed stipulation of facts? Mm. <clears throat> and yes, we do have a signed stipulation of facts in this matter. Great, thank you. Is there a motion to accept the signed stipulation of facts? So moved. Um, I, I apologize. Uh, uh, Mr. Canifax, did city licensing receive a stipulation? I'm sorry, which I think I might be confused about which case we're talking about. Which which I, matter number is this? Th this is agenda item number five. This would be Cafe Soleil. Okay, and no, we, we do not have a stipulation of facts for Cafe Soleil. I apologize, I was thinking about the next matter. I withdraw my motion. Okay, motion withdrawn. Yeah. And member Carr, um, did you have any ex parte communication or um, conflicts of interest with this case? I do not. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, okay, so in this case, we can move forward with Mr. DeBose. Mr. DeBose, can you um, let us know what happened in this situation and give us an explanation? Yes, uh, I would be delighted to. So, um, Eight days ago, um, I talked with Kristen Teague about um, the hearing. I got notice of the hearing, I think by email, this hearing here, and I was actually unaware that it was happening or why it was happening. Um, and as I found out, there had been an email sent to me on November 2nd concerning the issue, but it went into my junk folder and I actually didn't see it. Um, but it's my responsibility to check the junk folder, but I'm just saying I was unaware of it. And so when I was talking to Ms. Teague, um, what the issue that uh, brought up this disciplinary hearing, as I understand it, was that there was a record of chain of ownership, change of ownership going back probably to May uh, of this year, which actually I was shocked by because I had not sold the business. And uh, it had to do with Christopher Reading and Silly Rabbit for whatever reason, um, I have to kind of elaborate a little bit in terms of context here. I had a, um, an informal agreement with him to take over the general management of Cafe Soleil. And he was interested in buying the business. The idea was that he would actually uh, run it for a period of time. He would receive all the revenue, pay all the expenses and pay all the taxes and, and deal with all of the employment or the management issues which uh, was appealing to me because basically I was, um, as a result of the pandemic and we lost $76,000 the first part of this year, December through February, um, you know, either I had to sell it or close it. And so Christopher was interested in buying it. So we, we established a preliminary agreement, kind of a trial period agreement where he would handle all the functions of the business. Um, and I guess, I don't fully understand this, maybe uh, Ms. T can help, but uh, when he filed for a tax identification number, it somehow went to the BLA and triggered 
for some reason, uh, a change of ownership, which I did not initiate, nor did I acknowledge or consent to. So I, I don't understand that process. Um, Ms. T, do, do you want to explain why that, how that is? Or um, that's why we're the, here. Yes, at the pleasure of the authority, um, I can uh, fill in the background. City licensing was notified um, by the sales tax division upon review of the uh, monthly renewal list that for the Cafe Soleil liquor license, that there was um, a different um, owner reported for the business license. And in the city of Boulder, business licenses are tied directly to the address physical location. Okay. Um, at that time, we started doing a little bit of research um, and we're looking at the information that was provided by uh, Christopher Redding doing business as Silly Rabbit to the sales tax division, along with uh, review reviewing state liquor code requirements as to reported officer and owner changes. We determined that this could potentially be an alleged violation for failure to report an officer owner change as the um, change of ownership for that licensed location through the sales tax division to a different new entity and city licensing had no record of a application filed through us to add this individual as a part of a managing partnership to this existing liquor license. Therefore, we initiated the show cause notice administratively and uh, provided the same uh, timely to Mr. Uh, DuBose, he did state that it went unfortunately to his junk mail and he did not um, see it um, up until just uh, recently. We did have a series of communications uh, back and forth where he did provide additional documentation, all which was included in the Beverage Licensing Authority hearing packet, which included um, items back and forth from him and Mr. Reading with Silly Rabbit. Um, operational characteristics, uh, monetary exchanges, and things like that. Um, so that is uh, why we are here today. Okay. Well, thank you for clarifying. So it had to do with a change of business license with the address, that, but not specifically with the BLA. And honestly, um, there was not a change of ownership, and there was not an addition or a change in partnership structure. He was an independent third-party management company. Um, through Silly Rabbit LLC to basically manage the business for a period of time to see if in fact the sale would be appropriate. And we concluded uh, in July or so that you know, we didn't wanna do it mutually. And so he remained operating the business to the end of August. And at that time he withdrew, I took back over the general management role, operational role, and I closed the business on December 4. So, the question I have for you all is the reason we're here at this meeting, um, respectfully, is that there was an alleged change of ownership, but there was not actually, and I wasn't notified. I mean, if this happened in May and I got noticed in November, that's a pretty long gap. And it just, again, really surprised me that there was any kind of implication that ownership had changed because I was unaware of, A, it didn't happen, and B, I was unaware that the BLA had a concern about this. So um, maybe that's a moot point. Here we are. So we need to kind of go forward with, with you know, what to do. So if I may, I, I can kind of cut to the quick here. I mean, basically, um, you know, I've had this business for 28 years. It had a jazz separate club component for uh, 11 or 12 years. I personally have produced 1400 shows at the Jazz Supper Club, which actually were really pretty awesome. I hope some of y'all went to them. Um, and, you know, the pandemic hit, we, we lost a lot of money uh, because of the Omicron variant in revenue or sales are down 40%. Everyone got sick, including myself with COVID. And I just was beat up by it. And that's why I was looking to the possibility of selling it to uh, Chris Reading. Um, I also have a heart condition. I have AFib and it's chronic. I had an ablation a couple of years ago and I was scheduled for an ablation November 29, which I canceled because of this process. Um, I'm on call to get an ablation coming up as soon as one is available. So kind of um, a combination of all these factors, A, we lost a lot of money. B, I'm 66 and I'm just worn out. I don't want to do this anymore. 
And C, my health is not good. And stress is a real factor for AFib. Um, so what I'd like to what I'd like to request is I'm done with the business. It's closed. Um, I'm happy to, um, what's the word? Uh, well, I could terminate the license. I could surrender it. Or if that doesn't fit you all's protocols and you want to revoke it, that's fine with me also. I don't know what the ramifications of the two options are, but basically I'm done and I would like to end this process. Um, and however we can best do that is what I would like to do. And I'm not actually interested at 66 of getting back into the business of restaurant ownership um, and having a liquor license or, you know, I'm done with the business and I'm moving on. So that's, that's where I am with this. And I'm happy to, you know, answer any questions or have any discussion with you all about the way forward with this. Are there any questions from the board, uh, Member Wallace? <clears throat> uh, with, I would just suggest that uh, with the, uh, uh, the ac acquiescence of the city clerk, um, that we go ahead and accept the surrender of the license. Uh, if let's, I may, let, let's discuss that at um, deliberation. Well, I'm not. I'm just. I'm making a motion if, if necessary. Then when it has a second, then we can discuss it. So. Yeah, um, we haven't closed for deliberation though. This is a time for any questions to Mr. Debose from the board. Oh, okay. I don't have any questions from Mr. DeVos. I think I got it. Does any other board members have any questions? All right, Mr. DeBose, did you have anything else that you wanted to state? I think that's kind of the general picture. I mean, there are a lot of gnarly details along the way, but that's basically the story. And um, again, I'd like to terminate the license, however you all see fit. Great, thank you. At this time, we will close for deliberation. Member Wallace, had a motion. Kristen, I think you might, we're going to say something. Right. Um, in the BLA packet, Mr. DeBose has provided um, executed surrender documents. However, um, per policy and liquor code, we are not able to final process out a surrender until um, a licensee is clear with the sales tax division, um, which um, this business is not at this time. Can I speak to that? Uh, please. Okay, so that is correct. And I actually talked with uh, Alberto, you know, several times in this process. I'm afraid I don't know his last name uh, with this, this sales and tax. And um, we are three months behind and then including November, that would be four months behind on sales tax. He and I have worked out a repayment schedule for it. There's a uh, there's an issue regarding August sales tax with uh, Christopher Reading, which we're trying to sort out, um, Alberto and myself. Um, but there are taxes that are outstanding and there is an agreement in place to repay them. Can you uh, it, both, uh, supply a copy of that um, repayment contract that you have to uh, the licensing clerks? I can, it's an email exchange, but I'm happy to do so. Yeah, that would be great to have that on the record. Um, Member Wallace, were you going to say something? I was just going to uh, uh, amend my my motion to include uh, a uh, a final disposition with sales tax. So the motion would be to uh, accept the surrender of the license upon su uh, uh, submission of the, of the approval of the sales tax division. Great, thank you. Is there a second? Member Carr will second that. Great. Um, all in favor, say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Wallace, aye. Member Roberts, aye. Member Carr, aye. All right. Motion passes. Thank so, you. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Um, I will go ahead um, and prepare the um, documentation uh, that will be coming for both signature by the city attorney's office and to Mr. Uh, DeBose um, tomorrow. Great, thank you, Mr. DeBose. All right, well, thank you. Signing off.
continuing on in our agenda today is the continued show cause concerning an alleged August 5th, 2022 violation and whether the retail store li type liquor license held by Punjabi 2 Corporation doing business as Bailey's Wine and Spirits, 4800 Baseline Road, Unit E101, Boulder, Colorado, 80303 should be suspended or revoked. Great, thank you. And I believe this is Michael, is it? Nuances, is that how you pronounce? Nuance, sir. Nuance. Uh, Mr. Nuance, are you represented by counsel today? No, I'm I'm a, a good friend. Here's the owner. Uh, it's Gershon right. Garcha, and I'm a good friend and business business colleague of hers. And you'll see me a little bit later on on, on, an, on another matter as well. Done this many, many times with many different uh, uh, boards all across the state. So uh, if you will, if I if I may, I consider myself to be a subject matter expert in the liquor business throughout the state of Colorado. But that's through my through that's through my uh, through my lens. So great, thank you, uh, Kristen. Can we get them sworn in, and then I will read it, the procedures into the record. Certainly. All right, um, Ms. Garsha, may I have you raise your right hand and repeat after me, please? I state your name. I state your name. Gushan uh, Garcha. Thank you. Do you solemnly swear or affirm? Do solemnly. Sorry, can you repeat? Solemnly. Solemnly swear, swear or affirm. Confirm. That the testimony. That the testimony. I am about to provide. I'm about to provide. The Beverage Licensing Authority. Beverage Licensing Authority. Today is true and correct. Today is true and correct. Thank you. Can we also get you to please state your name again? Gushan Spell your Garcha. first and last name and provide your address, please. First name is Gursharn. Last name is Garcha. Address 4800 Baseline Road. E101, uh, Colorado Boulder, 80303. They want your home address. And to spell your spell your first name and spell your last name. G-U-R-S-H-A-R-N, Gershan is the first name. G-A-R-C-H-A, -A Garcha is the last name. Your home address. Uh, my home address is 19333 East Briarwood Place. Uh, Centennial, Colorado, 80016. Thank you. Thank you. Can we get Michael sworn in as well, just because I think that he would be yes, certainly. Hi, Michael I, Lewis. Thank you. Solemnly you solemnly swear. swear or affirm. Or affirm. That the testimony I am about to give the Beverage Licensing Authority that the testimony I'm about to give the Beverage Licensing Authority. Today is true and correct. Today is too, true and correct. Can you please state your name, spell your name, and give your address, please? Michael Nuanes, M-I-C-H-A-E-L-N-U-A-N-E-S. My address is 7651 Schaefer Parkway, Suite B2, Littleton, Colorado, 80217. Thank you. Great, thank you. And since you're not represented by counsel, I'm going to go ahead and read the proceedings into the record. Please do. Okay. <clears throat> this is a public hearing before the Beverage Licensing Authority of the City of Boulder to determine whether or not the license of Punjabi 2 Corporation doing business as Bailey Wine and Spirits uh, with a... Why can't I find this? A retail liquor store type of liquor license, sorry about that, shall be suspended or revoked on the basis of the violations alleged in the order to show cause served upon the licensee and requiring the licensee's presence here today. Because this is a disciplinary proceedings, the authority shall not ask for or allow comment from members of the general public on the guilt of the licensee or the appropriate discipline to be imposed. The purpose of this hearing is to receive testimony presented by the city and by the licensee in order to enable the authority to make findings 
and to determine by a preponderance of the evidence whether or not the licensee has violated the various laws as alleged. If in the course of the hearing, testimony or other evidence establishes the guilt of the licensee of a violation of some other law, rule, or regulation than those stated in the notice, the licensee shall be afforded a reasonable continuance upon any offer that evidence in defense, explanation, and mitigation is not then available to the licensee, but can be obtained within the period of a continuance not to exceed 10 days. A record is being made of these proceedings. All testimony shall be given under oath. The rules of evidence and requirement of proof and procedure shall confirm to the extent practicable to those in civil non-jury cases, but when necessary to ascertain facts affecting the substantial rights of the public or of the licensee. The authority may receive and consider evidence not admissible under such rules if such evidence poses prob probative value commonly accepted by reasonable and prudent persons in the conduct of their affairs. The rules of privilege required by law shall be respected in this proceeding, and the chair may exclude incompetent and unduly repetitious evidence. The chair shall rule upon all questions of evidence and procedure, subject to being overruled on motion sustained by a majority vote of those members of the authority present. Should a licensee wish to request a fine in lieu of active suspension days, they should notify the authority of this after a penalty is determined, if any, but before a uh, suspension posting is discussed and the licensee should be prepared to supply an estimated per day suspension dollar amount for the authority's deliberations. Those who desire to be heard shall identify themselves by stating their name, spelling their last name and stating their per uh, pertinent address. They shall also be sworn in by the board secretary. Is there any ex parte communication or conflict of interest from any of the board members? Member Califano, no. Member Absalom, no. Member Wallace, no. Member Roberts, no. Member Card, no. All right. At this time, um, Mr. Nuance, are you ready to proceed? I am, sir. Thank you very much. Board members, I appreciate your time and I'll kind of go over uh, this. Is, this is going to overlap into something else, but I just want to kind of set the stage. Uh, Ms. Garcha, purchased Bailey Wine and Spirit on February 6, 2020 from the previous owner of Bailey Wine and Spirits. And she sold it this last year on September 7th, 2022 to uh, another couple, uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Gannett Kadane, Kadani. Uh, and they're coming up in, in, a, in, a, in a motion later on. Uh, in, the, in the meantime, on August 5th, 2022, at 10, 11, 10 in the morning, uh, a sting operation was conducted at Bailey's uh, Wine and Spirits. At, at that time, uh, I can tell you what, exactly what took place. A cashier did not show up at the, for, 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 uh, for work that day, and a driver, a, a driver, a delivery driver for the liquor uh, was standing at the counter. At that particular point in time, uh, the undercover, I assume it's a, uh, an uh, undercover police officer came in, underage uh, police cadet, if you will, came into the, the liquor store and asked to be checked out on some some uh, liquor. Well, the driver didn't know what he was doing. The driver actually went behind the counter, uh, sold him some um, liquor, and then a you know the the sting was was uh, shown to to shed light. And uh, Mr. Nuance, can I pause you real quick? Yes. I apologize. Um, yes. I skipped over a, a process of stipulation of facts. Right. Uh, We've already we already have one, don't we? We do, and it's signed. So, it, is there a motion to accept? I believe we already moved and set, already accepted this into the record. Was that last? last time? Time? Yes. Sorry. Okay. I apologize. That's okay. Uh, Mr. Nuance, please continue. Okay. So, at that point in time, uh, the, the the police officer made himself known that a violation did occur. And a citation was issued, uh, Section 5, 573, uh, with Boulder Municipal Code, to John Erickson, who is the delivery driver uh, of, of, of an employee of Mrs. Garcha. I can tell you on that particular day, Mrs. Garcha was not on scene. Her manager was in the back uh, checking in uh, a delivery in the back, and the manager was, was present uh, at her direction, and he was busy doing something else. Again, the, the cashier did not show up. The delivery driver went behind this behind the register and tried to check this this uh, person out. 
Uh, Mr. Erickson was cited, as I, as I, as I told you. Um, the store was already under contract to be purchased, so the delivery driver was let go. He, uh, I don't know if he pled guilty. I don't, I don't know Mr. Erickson at all. I don't know the outcome of his, of, of what took place with his situation. I just know that I represent uh, Ms. Garcha here in this, in this situation, but we're not disputing the facts that a violation did occur. What I would like to, to provide to the, uh, to the, the Boulder Liquor Authority is that the liquor store has, has sold, has changed hands, and that Mrs. Garcha, she, she understands the severity of this and she understands exactly what happened. Uh, I can tell you a little bit about Mrs. Garcha. She and her husband have owned six liquor stores in throughout the state of Colorado. She came to America uh, in 1999 from India at that point in time. And I can tell you this firsthand, I've, I've been friends of, friends of the family for a long time. They arrived, she and her husband arrived with two suitcases, $40 and one husband. She came with one husband, he came with one wife. So, and they're still married uh, to, to one another. Uh, since then, they've, they've uh, again, owned six different liquor stores in the state of Colorado, gas stations, and other small businesses throughout the state of Colorado. They've been stewards of the community. They understand the, the, the violation. They understand how severe and the impact this could, this can take place, uh, this, or this, this would cause anybody. They understand that. Uh, I, I guess I, I'm asking you if we can forego this. Uh, because the, the the liquor or I'm sorry the liquor store has sold from party A to party B and that's where that's what we're here about thank you are there any questions from the board member Wallace just just the, if she I I saw in the materials that it was made clear to her that any violations that, that occurred previous to her taking control would have to be served by her she understood that correct Yes, she yes. understands that. She understood that, that, that it was her job to find out before she made the purchase that, uh, whether or not there were any violations uh, uh, waiting to be adjudicated. No, this, uh, Mr. Mr. Wallace, this is the seller, not the buyer. This is the seller, not the buyer. So we don't have the current licensee in front of us at all. Uh, they are here, and I will be speaking on their behalf in, I assume, a few minutes, sir. Okay, I get, I get it. Now, now, now it's much clearer to me, and I understand it. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Are there any other questions from any of the board members? I have a quick question, Chair Califano, if it's okay. Did you say there's another person who's going to be speaking on this particular show cause? Is that a question for me, Mrs. Witt? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm a business broker, and I've, yes, yes. I've, I've brokered probably 600 liquor stores in the state of Colorado, so I will also have a presentation for the, for the purchasers, and that's okay. coming up. I don't. I didn't know which one was going to be first. Mrs. Garcia came sense. to visit me in my office. Uh, the the other couple who purchased it are are there at the store right now, and I can see that they're they're uh, okay on, for the next on, agenda on, item. Yes. Okay. So I didn't just know which to, one was going to happen first. Oh no, totally. That's absolutely fine. Um, just to confirm, uh, Ms. Garcia isn't actually the one that signed the stipulation of facts, so I just want to make sure um, that she like agrees with everything you stated, and um, yes, just the I verbal am. confirmation would be great. Yes, I am. Thank you. Great. Are there any other questions from the board? Yeah, I had a question or a point of clarity. Um, just wondering when we were talking about this um, last month, we were um, deliberating over whether or not. So the person the in front of us right now for this show cause hearing, this person is selling the license, right? So our, our question was any penalty that would be imposed on this license, would that go through on a transfer? And I think that was some ambiguity that we did not have an answer to. And that's why this got moved to this month. So with someone who owns several licenses throughout the state of Colorado, if this person is subject to um, handling this violation while holding the license, now is selling it, where, when we're addressing the show cause, where does any sort of determination that we make here, where does that onus fall on? The person this per this person who's selling it or the person who's buying it is my question if if i may speak on that just just real quickly mr wallace if you want to go first i'll go i'll go after you what yeah you I, I was just going to say that uh in the, in the subsequent agenda item uh it the the, the for the uh our purchaser um it was made clear to them that they needed to uh, to check into um the previous owner's uh, uh, uh possible violation of any of any ordinances 
and that they would personally be held responsible for uh, a, a violation if in fact one had occurred previous to their ownership. So in other words, the, the, the answer to the question is in the next agenda item and the materials for it, which were uh, uh, that yes, they are responsible for, to, to serve whatever penalty is, is determined uh, as a result of the previous owners. And they were, they were directed to make sure they understood that before they made the purchase. Thank you, Member Wallace. I just wanted clarity. That's what I thought, and I'm glad. Yeah, I, I, didn't know, I didn't know it either until I read that. Thing, so I right. No, I just I, that's what I, how I read it, and I just wanted to make sure that we're clear on that as we move forward with this current agenda. May I address the board on that? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, I I can tell you firsthand that there are only two municipalities in the state who. Uh, and Mr. Wallace, I'm not arguing with you. You you have an interpretation of the law of, of, of how you see it. There are only two municipalities in the state that agree with Mr. Wallace, and that is Denver and that is Boulder. And right now there is a there is a uh, 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 case before the Colorado Supreme Court that is challenging this with 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 the city and county of Denver. Um, what has always taken place in every other municipality that this is taken care of, this has taken place, the previous, in this case, Mrs. Garcha would be served a penalty or whatever that is. And it's it, the, 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 penal, the penalty does not carry forward to the new, uh, to the new uh, business owner. I'm, I'm not arguing any point. I'm just stating some facts that, that are out there. So, so it's on record. I just... Just to be sure, I, I wasn't making a, a, a case for a statement. I was just repeating what I read. Uh, it's apparently in, in our rules and regulations, and that's what I was repeating. I wasn't suggesting anything other than what I had read. Understood, sir. I, and, and again, I'm only I'm I'm not trying to cause an argument with anybody on the board. I'm just stating the facts that's, uh, that are that are out there. And and again, I, I think this will. Whenever, whenever the state of Colorado Supreme Court decides to hear this case, uh, then, then at that point they're going to rule in the, one direction or the other. I, you know, it's going to it's going to come out. I would say within the next few months. Are there any other questions from any board member? Not seeing any. All right, uh, Mr. Nelson, did you have anything else you wanted to present? No, sir. Great. At this time, we will close for deliberation. Um, is there any discussion on a penalty? I don't know. I, I guess the question is, do we just want to go with the, the chart, our normal chart uh, penalty schedule, or do we want to do something different? And I don't know the answer to that question. I mean, I guess the, the answer to the question is the amount of mitigating aggravating factors in this particular case. Um, and, you know, it's such a unique thing with this transfer happening. Um, it kind of changes some of the way that I'm thinking about it. Um, there's obviously, you know, we don't have anything in our packet to cover this particular show cause. We see what's happening with the new ownership in terms of their, um, their policies and some of the things that they're doing. So it, to me, it just seems a little, there's not enough information for me to, to really manage any mitigating or aggregating factors for this particular license that is now um, attempting to be transferred. We could do a fine in lieu of. <clears throat> we could. Um, it's also kind of, I agree with you, Member Absalom, it's um, kind of like we, it almost should be one, it should have been one agenda item. But it, I, I get why we can't do that. But it's like you need information from one for the other and vice versa. So I do agree with you on that. I think we could start with the uh, table value as a baseline and decrease or increase and go from there. So table value for this. Let me see if I can find that if anybody has it. It is. Yeah, I have it here for a liquor store. It's going to be day, three. nine days with three days served. Is that right? So it's one count of sale to a minor, right? Right. And it's a liquor store off premise license. So that'd be three days served and six in advance for one count. Right. That's the table value. So let's start with that. Do we want to? I would, 
Oh, go ahead. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, sorry. Um, Chair Califano, I, I would say I would make a motion um, to go off of the table value given the lack of mitigating aggravating factors. I don't, we don't have any other real evidence other than what we can see in the affidavit. Um, there's obviously the violation, there's a table value. That would be where I'm leaning. I would say we could do the table value. And then if, if in fact the licensee was, was, was uh, willing to consider a fine in lieu of, we could consider that after, because we have to consider the fine in lieu of after we first set the penalty. Um, I don't know whether they're prepared or not today with the numbers necessary to, to uh, come forward, which they're required to be um, for us to consider. So um, that's a tough one. I don't, I, as I said, we can't really do anything that is not a, a, a service. We've done a half a day before, but um, I, 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 I'm, I'm puzzled. What are you suggesting, Mike? I'm suggesting we go off the table value, um, and I agree with what what you're getting at there, Steve. Is that essentially with this license transferring a fine in lieu of would potentially make more sense for the the, the person who's selling this license, mm -hmm. um, because trans and you know, like you said, and you know, those, you know, those are things that are happening. We have to go over our rules, like you said, Steve, and what is written for us in our rules is that this, whatever, whatever we come to here would roll over to the person who's buying this um, or taking this license. So my suggestion would be just to go um, off the table value off of one count with a lack of evidence in any other direction in mitigation um, or aggravating factors. I, I don't, there's no other, I don't have any other way to measure this other than what we have in front of us. I agree. Uh, so I, I, if that's a motion, I'll second it. Could we hear the motion again, please? So I will make a motion here and um, maybe you can help me say this correctly, but um, for this show cause hearing, the motion would be for the um, licensee in question to serve, have three days served and six days in abeyance as listed by the BLA rules for one count of sale to a minor. Second. All right. All in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member, Member Wallace, Robert. aye. Sorry, sorry, Leah. Sorry. I'm sorry. No. Um, Member Roberts, aye. And I, I think we may have lost Member Carr. We did. He had to take a call. Okay. Yeah, he took he sent a message. <laughs> I see it. Okay, so motion passes for table value. Um, Steve, did you want to? Well, Mr. Nina, is, is uh, um, actually, Kristen, is, who's responsible for this fee fine at this point? Um, That's a good question. If, if we took Witt, a fine in lieu of, who would be responsible for paying? So Council Witt can um, help clarify on this a little bit further. Um, however, I would believe that it would be the licensee that had the violation at the yes. time. Yeah, because it happened when the licensee had the had the ownership of the license and they would be their responsibility to pay. Then I, I would say that if, if the, uh, Ms. Nunez, if you are aware that, that in fact, that if, if this, this uh, uh, closure of, of service or for this new, the new ownership would take place for three days, uh, um, absent, however, you have the opportunity to pay a fine in lieu of um, and, and uh, uh, make that go away. I think that would be the most appropriate. I, I, this is me speaking on, on just in a human sense. It doesn't make sense to penalize the person receiving the license for something that took place under Ms., Mrs. Garch's uh, uh, watch. It, it just doesn't make sense. It, and it's not, and it's not right. I, I hear, and, and, and we can actually make the transfer conditional on your having paid the license when, when it comes up. I would I would ask Mr. Wallace I would ask that uh, the, the sale has been you know has taken place I would ask that we uh, be as lenient as we can towards Mrs. Garches so she can she can take care of that uh, and, and we can probably take care of that today we can put a mail a check in the mail today if we had to do you know the amount no. uh, in sorry, order Chris. to in order to do that, we have a uh, document that we, with instructions and the request for records uh, that we send out 
um, when requesting the materials and items we need in order to calculate out the fine in lieu. So that would be forthcoming. Okay. Um, from our office and we could set, uh, and there is a deadline for, um, and it's been a while since we've done one of those, um, well, that there is a deadline um, for once we send them that letter that they have to turn in the required um, books and records for that. And then we calculate out the fine and then there's a deadline for them uh, in order to have that paid by certified funds. You got it all, Matthew? I did. Okay. Um, are you make is that your motion for a fine in lieu at this point? Steve? No, I, I he needs to they need to request it. We formally request a fine in lieu of suspension or closure of the the, the license. The and, then Kristen, if you could send them the information necessary for them to determine for us to determine uh, how much the fine will be. Um, and then uh, I will proceed from there. Okay. Um, and Historically, the fine has been um, calculated out by licensed staff members and sent out. Um, however, we'll take board direction. At that point, would we hear it next hearing? We could provide that information in the next BLA hearing packet for your record, yes. And uh, Council, are we able to uh, make a motion for that now without that information? And then... Um, just hear the information at the next hearing? Yeah, I think so. It's, traditionally, it's done by the staff, so you wouldn't normally need to be involved, but if you want to hear the information next meeting, you could ask the staff to do that. It wouldn't need to be a motion. You could just direct the staff to bring back that information. What's the rest of the board think? Good idea. I'm going to grant it. Yeah, that's why I thought it was good. Great. So what was could, a good one, Steve? <laughs> if we could just have that in the next uh, month's packet, that'd be great. Um, Okay, so is there a motion to accept the fine in lieu? So moved. Member Absalom will second. All in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Wallace, aye. Member Roberts, aye. All right, fine in lieu has been accepted. That will be determined by city staff. I think we're good at this point. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Continuing on in today's agenda is agenda item number seven, hearing and consideration of an application filed on September 7th, 2022 from GK LLC doing business as Bailey's Wine and Spirits, 4800 Baseline Road, Unit E-101, Boulder, Colorado, 80303, Gannett Cadane, managing member, and with no additional ownership over 10%, with a business mailing address of 13343 Wild Basin Way, Broomfield, Colorado, 80020, for the transfer of a retail store type liquor license. Great. And Mr. Uh, Nuance, um, are you representing your clients today? Are they present with us? Yes, sir, I am. But they are not present with us? Uh, they Yes, they are here. Uh, Gannett? Can you, Tesla? can you guys show your, turn on your, your video and turn on your microphone, please? They, I, I saw them earlier. I know they're here. It's still they're right here. there under Bailey's. They're the Bailey's, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And they were here, they were sitting, the husband and wife were sitting together. There they are. Yeah, Hi, guys. Hi, Mike. Great. And are you represented by council today? No. My, okay. my, Michael. By me. They're represented by me. Okay. But I am not an attorney, nor do I play one on television. <laughs> okay, great. Um, let's get you sworn in and your client sworn in, and then I'll read the uh re procedures into the record. Uh Mr. Nuanas, uh, you were sworn in before. Do you continue to swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give the beverage licensing authority this afternoon on this specific agenda item true and correct? I absolutely do, ma'am. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. And for our licensee, and I apologize if I am doing a mispronunciation, please correct me. May I see um, Gannett Kidane? Raise your hand, Gannett. There you go. Thank you. Can I get you to please uh, raise your right hand? Thank you. Repeat after me. I, state your name. I, Gannett Kidane. 
Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That the testimony I am about to provide. That the testimony I'm about to provide. The beverage licensing authority. To the beverage licensing authority. Is true and correct. True and correct. Thank you. Can I also get you to state your name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the record? Kenneth Kidane, spell G-H-E-N-N-E-T, last name K-I-D-A-N-E, address 13343 Wild Basin Way, Broomfield, Colorado, A0020. Thank you. And will um, your husband, I believe it is, will he be providing any testimony today? No. No? Okay. Um, I will note for the authority that there was a secondary um, IHR provided today as an agenda, agenda exhibit. Um, this is for a um, individual as part of the license, um, but less than 10% ownership, but because of their title per state liquor code, they're required to turn in an IHR. There were no um, findings, however, um, as far as any uh, records, there were no criminal findings found. Great, thank you, Kristen. Mm -hmm. All right, since you're not represented by counsel, I'm gonna go ahead and read the proceedings into the record. <clears throat> this is a public hearing before the Beverage License Authority of the City of Boulder to determine whether or not the application of Bailey's Wine, or I'm sorry, GKLLC, doing business as Bailey's Wine and Spirits uh, for a transfer of a retail liquor store type license uh, shall be granted or denied. This hearing is conducted pursuant to the laws of the state of Colorado and the rules of the Beverages Licensing Authority of the City of Boulder. A record is being made of these proceedings. Those who desire to be heard shall identify themselves by stating their name, spelling their last name, and stating their pertinent address. They shall also be sworn in by the board secretary. Is there any conflict of interest uh, from any of the board members or ex parte communication? Member Califano, no. Member Absalom, no. Member Wallace, no. Member Roberts, no. Member Carr, no. All right. Uh, Mr. Nuance, are you ready to proceed? Uh, uh, please, we're ready. Please proceed. Okay. Well, good evening or good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the of the board. I want to introduce you to Gannett Kadani. Uh, Gannett Kadani is 65 years old. She came to the United States in 1983 from Eritrea. She became a citizen on 111 of 1991 in the Colorado D District Court. Uh, she has advanced degrees as a pharmacist. Uh, I believe she's got a doctorate in in pharmacy. I, I could be wrong on that, but we'll 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 hear from her in a minute. Uh, she's here on behalf of her company which is GKLLC doing business as Bailey Wine and Spirits uh, to, to request a, a transfer hearing from the liquor license from the, the previous owners to her. Uh, she and her husband have been married many, many years. They have several kids, several children. Uh, she's a 95% owner and uh, uh, Ms. Ms. Teague uh, explained that earlier. Um, she has been a, ph a pharmacy or in pharmacy since 1991 and she's lived in Broomfield since September of 2006. Uh, she has owned two liquor stores in the past. Uh, one was in Littleton, known as Littleton Discount Liquor. She owned that from 1999 to 2002. And then she also owned one in Brighton, Colorado, which was called East Bridge Liquors. Liquors. She, that was from 2003 to 2000, 2015. Uh, she now owns the, the liquor store in question, which is Bailey Wine and Spirit, uh, 41, 4,166 square feet. It is operated Monday through Thursday, 9.30 in the morning till 10.30 at night, with uh, hours of Friday and Saturday at 9.30 to 11, and then Sunday, 10 o'clock to 9 p.m. The business is ran by her family. It's she and her husband, along with their children, plus two additional uh, employees that run it. Uh, all of the employees, including everybody in the family, is are TIP certified, and they were given a, a store's written al alcohol policy from our company, and they abide by that. All of the employees sign that uh, uh, their alcohol policy, and they understand the consequences of serving to a minor, the consequences of, of, of serving to somebody intoxicated. 
with that, we've had several discussions and they know this from owning previous liquor stores, the five types of uh, IDs that they can, they can uh, uh, accept as, as a real ID. And those five are, are any, any state ID, any, you know, any of the 50 state issued IDs or any of the 50 uh, uh, state driver's license, any, uh, any, let's see, let me, I have them right here. Military identification card, alien registration card, a passport, and a valid consular card from a foreign country. They have this on their on their uh, employment letter, and they know what this looks like. They also know not to serve to anybody who is visually in, intoxicated, and that's anybody who uh, who has slurred or or loud speech, uh, spittle between the lips, odor of alcoholic beverage upon their breath, uh, repeatedly asking the same question, fumbling for items such as a cigarette, poor eye contract. I, Poor eye contact, eye contact, uh, poor motor function such as walking, standing, or anything with a hat, hand, or anybody who's just damn drunk. We all know what it looks like. Okay, so they they understand that. Um, their POS has a, a digital ID scanner that will scan the IDs and let them know whether or not it's valid, uh, or at least in, in that system, it may be valid. It, it doesn't mean that that's an absolute, but that's just a tool that they use. But also their common sense and their TIP certification is something that they they understand and they'll rely upon to to, to serve the, the citizens of Boulder County or in Boulder City there for that matter. Um, their inventory breakdown is 9% beer, 46% liquor, 44% wine and 1% other and that can be mixers or chips or soda, anything like that. Uh, with that, we would like to open any questions from the board to uh, either myself or Ms. Kadani and we would be happy to answer any questions. Great, thank you. Are there any questions from any of the board members? Um, Member Wallace? Um, I just wanted to ask, do you have it? I was noticing, um, is, am I wrong or is there's only one TIP certified person at this location? Uh, maybe you haven't received it, but I talked to Mr. Mrs. Kadani yesterday and all of everybody was, was TIP certified there. So I, I'm not sure. I'll, no, we're, I'll let we're all certified. Yes. Uh, all? City, li Who's all? City licensing can confirm that that is correct and that we did receive those. Okay. Uh, another question for you. Uh, do you have any procedures in, that, that you could plan or plan any procedures um, for prohibiting sales to at-risk community uh, in Boulder, i.e. Uh, uh, people who are clearly struggling with alcohol uh, and, and, and living on the streets? Uh my profession is a pharmacist, and as a, as a pharmacist, I know how people uh, react if they have uh, any of those problems. Like the other day, I have to turn down a person that was I'll, uh, I'll intoxicated call. because I know I sold him all the liquor and stuff in the morning, and he came like by eight o'clock, and I could see he was all red and stumbling, and he was asking me questions, so I denied him. And I know, uh, I know how to get the how to ask questions to to let them know uh, how they feel and stuff like that. So I know what I'm doing. So I will be a, a responsible person. Have you been able to put together procedures or trainings for the people who work for you, who will also be selling the alcohol, so that they'll be able to do it as you have just, as you just explained? Definitely, yeah. It's a, it's a, a, a you're, you're, you're a large operation. I mean, it's a, 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 it's a, it's, it's a responsibility that, that has been thrust upon you as a result of uh, where we are today. I know. And, um, and they all know, and then we went through the training and all that, and I'm there all the time. So I'm pretty sure we're going to do a good job. I have no reason not to believe you. You mind if I ask a quick question? Um, can you please just confirm verbally for the record that you agree with everything that Mr. Nuance has said, just to make sure that we have it verbally on the record since he's not an attorney. I just want to make sure that we, um, I, I agree that you agree with everything. I, I, I agree with everything Mr. Nunez said. Thank you. All right, great. Any other questions from the board? I had one other question. Um, 
So, Ms. Kahani, um, you know, you've you've had liquor stores in Brighton and Littleton, which are um, communities that are unlike Boulder. Um, the location that you have um, now are trying to get the license for is known for underage service and as proof that there has been a failed um, compliance check there. You have um, here that you are going to be using um, you know, all vertical IDs. I, I'm looking at your policy, which looks very good. Um, I just want you to um, understand that when it comes to this um, community, that location specifically is known by college kids to go and use IDs. So what other ways are you looking to check IDs other than what I'm seeing in here? I'm seeing bring up a sale. You will not accept any vertical IDs. Is that true? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You will not accept any vertical IDs from any state. Well, uh, we'd have to look at this this the the booklet. Um, I I know Colorado is the underage is is vertical. I do not know about other states. We'd have to look into that, Mr. Absolute. I'm not saying that you're legally required to do so. It's just a policy issue. When you have come to an at-risk place legally, you just need to make sure that the person is 21 years of age. Right. Um, so what I'm saying to you is that just respecting the onus that you're taking on with this particular location and being aware of underage service in that particular space is really important to our community. When you come from a place like Brighton and Littleton, you're dealing with a completely different um, set of, of customers coming in, um, most of whom are students and young. Um, so, and I have nothing but confidence given your you know background and training, make sure that everyone's trained and just putting it, you know, really on your radar to be very, very diligent about um, about how you card people and and young, people underage. Um, that's a really big thing in our community. I just want to make sure you're clear on that. It's a big responsibility being here in this college town. Thank you for that, Mr. Epsilon. I, I will tell you, we have discussed this at ad, ad nauseum, especially with what took place prior to. Uh, they understand this and obviously, you know, they they are witnessing, they were here the whole time, you know, they, they listen, they just weren't on, on the television, but uh, they witnessed and heard uh, what took place prior to. And, and I mean, I, I don't think I don't think a better example for them could be shown other than what we've already experienced this afternoon. I, have, I don't have any other questions. Thank you. And to member Absalom's point, I want to say it's California or uh, Arizona. One of them does have a vertical ID that you can still use it um, once you're over 21. So they do exist, just so. Yeah, they do. And they actually, in the state of Colorado, I believe there's a 15-day period after you turn 21 that you still have a valid Colorado ID that you can be served and you're of age. However, um, however, the, the, license, the, 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 the retailer has the, op, has the ability to, to, not, to, to make the determined not to accept it. Correct. That was and my point their, that I was trying to make, right. yeah. And that's right. in their policy. It's addressed in their policy. Right. And I was going to just say, too, uh, um, if I can, um, given your size, I would expect that you would be a very active member in the responsible heat retail organization. Okay, we will. Okay. Because you, uh, 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 the previous, own, previous owners, two, two owners ago, which had a stellar record of, of, of ownership for, for years, uh, uh, or if not decades, uh, um, were, were, were active members in, in, in the previous iteration. And in, in, uh, um, I'm hoping that you, you, you will be as well, given your size. We will do it. We'll be there. Thanks. All right, great. Any other questions from the board? Not seeing any. Um, all right, Mr. Nuance, did you have anything else you wanted to present? I do not. Thank you very much for the time today. All right, great. We will close for deliberation. Is there a motion to approve this transfer? Member Califano will move to approve. Member Carr will second. All in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Wallace, aye. Member Roberts, aye. Member Carr, aye. Transfer has been approved. Thank you very much, Mr. Nuance. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate you guys, and I, I assume I will see you next month. I see Officer Denning is here. Yes. 
I was going to note that for the authority if they would be interested in hearing um, his agenda item. That would be a great segue for him. Perfect. Do we need to stay put or we or we're, we're clear, right? Thanks. Thank you, guys. Take care. Okay, thank you very much. Bye bye. Circling back into our agenda, returning to agenda item number two, matters from the Boulder Police Department, Officer Denning. Officer Denick, are you? Available there. Maybe he stepped away. Um, let's come back to him after the next agenda item. Certainly. Moving on in our agenda is uh, the following item. Agenda item number eight, public hearing and consideration of an application filed on September 30th, 2022 from SB Wines LLC doing business as Persona Wine, 2299 Pearl Street, Unit 6, Boulder, Colorado, 80302, Sarah Barnes, owner and managing member with a business mailing address of 4871 Broadway Street, apartment 212, Boulder, Colorado, 80304, for a new retail liquor store type license. Great, thank you. And um, looks like we have three people here today, Sarah, Carol, and Justin. Um, Justin, are you acting as counsel? I am. Great, so we're gonna get you sworn in first and then we'll st uh, start with the a reading of the proceedings. Uh, Kristen? Okay, um, with attorneys, we just have them record their, he is an attorney, so we can just have him record his presence. Mr. Conrad? Uh, yes, Justin Conrad from Hutchinson Black & Cook in Boulder, uh, appearing on behalf of the applicant SB Wines. And your license number, if you please? Uh, license 38002. Perfect, thank you so much. Hello, Sarah. Hi. Can I get you to raise your right hand and repeat after me, please? I, state your name. I, Sarah Barnes. Do solemnly swear or affirm. <clears throat> Do solemnly swear or affirm. That the testimony I'm about to provide. That the testimony I'm about to provide. The beverage licensing authority. The beverage licensing authority. Is true and complete. Is true and complete. Thank you. Can I get you also to state your name, spell your last name, and provide your mailing address, please? Sure. Sarah Barnas, last name Barnas, B-A-R-N-A-S, address 4871 Broadway Street, apartment 212, Boulder, Colorado, 80304. Thank you. And can you also swear or affirm that the premises was posted for the legal 10 day posting requirement? Yes. Thank you. Hello, Ms. Johnson. Good afternoon. May I get you to raise your right hand and repeat after me, please? I state your name. I, Carol Johnson. Do solemnly swear or affirm? Do solemnly swear and affirm that the testimony I am about to provide, that the testimony I'm about to provide, the beverage licensing authority. The beverage licensing authority is true and correct. Is true and correct. Thank you. All right. And since you're represented by counsel, I'd ask if you'd be willing to waive the reading of the proceedings into the record. Yes. Uh, Mr. Conrad. Yes. Great. Thank you. And is there any ex parte communication or um, conflict of interest from any of the board members? Member Califano, no. Member Absalom, no. Member Roberts, no. Member Carr, no. Did we lose Steve? All right. Okay. We can still proceed with the quorum. Um, Mr. Conrad, you uh, may proceed. Thank you so much. Uh, very happy to be here this evening. Uh, we're here to, uh, I'm here on behalf of SB Wines LLC, uh, doing business as Persona Wines. 
Um, and we're here on behalf uh, of, of the company to request uh, issuance of a retail sales license uh, to open a small business um, selling retail wine, craft beer, and a small curated selection of spirits at $22.99 Pearl. Um, this is on Pearl, a couple of blocks west of Pearl and Folsom. Um, Sarah Barnes is the founder and the sole owner, and she's going to be responsible for the business. Um, this will be her first experience owning a retail liquor store, um, but Sarah does have extensive experience with alcohol service in the hospitality industry uh, as a restaurant manager, a bartender, uh, and a server for 15 years in New York City. She, she started out here in Boulder and then moved to New York and um, recently relocated back to Boulder. Um, I think She's been working at Tangerine uh, Restaurant in North Boulder since she returned earlier this year. Um, I've had the privilege of working with her as she developed the idea for the business, uh, scouted locations. We, we went through the process of leasing um, and looking for neighborhoods that would benefit from uh, what she had in mind for a new, a new retail uh, store. So uh, my experience with Sarah has been, she's been very diligent. Um, she uh, asks the right questions. She wants to understand everything. Um, she clearly has experience with, with service, um, and she under, understands clearly the uh, responsibilities that she's going to have as the owner uh, of a retail licensed business. Um, and going through the process, uh, I think the survey evidence is going to show pretty clearly that the relevant neighborhood uh, both needs and desires um, what this would bring to the community. Um, no other business in the area offers what they'll bring, which is an approachable selection of, of wines and, and especially craft beers, along with um, her personally curated selection of spirits. Um, spoiler alert, the, the survey did yield 96% support um, from the neighborhood residents and businesses, um, which I think does demonstrate pretty strong support. Um, so with that, I will, uh, I'll introduce Ms. Varnas uh, and go ahead and uh, ask her a few questions, uh, if that's okay with the board. Yes. Um, real quick, Chair uh, Califano, I do see that Member Carr um, did return. However, we did not record a response as to ex parte communication. I believe that was Member Wallace. Oh, I apologize. Uh, no, I, have, I have no ex parte communication or, or conflict of interest. I do have a condo within relatively close distance of the, of the location, but I feel I can re render a decision on this separate, separate. Thank you, Member Wallace. Um, yes, Mr. Conrad, you may proceed with your client. Great, thank you. Uh, Sarah, uh, can you go ahead and uh, state your full name uh, once again? Yes, uh, uh, Sarah Barnes. And your home address? 4871 Broadway Street, apartment 212, Boulder, Colorado, 80304. Great, and what's, uh, what's your role gonna be with, with Persona Wines? Well, I, I am the owner. And it will be my first time owning a business like this before, but uh, yeah, sole owner of this retail liquor store, but mostly focusing on just wine, craft beer, and a small selected curated selection of, of liquor. And on a day-to-day -day basis, will you be in the store managing? Oh my God, every day <laughs> for the foreseeable future. It's, uh, it's my baby. Sure. Um, so, as you mentioned, this is your first uh, time owning a, a, a retail store. What can you tell us a little about your previous experience with alcohol sales? Yeah, so I've been in hospitality for probably a little over 15 years at this point. Started off in high school serving and post a scene. I actually worked at the Dark Horse here in Boulder during college, and then I moved to New York. And that's when I started becoming more of a management position for bars and restaurants, um, two in particular, Verlaine and Little Canal in New York City, and then gained a lot of experience out there, really enjoyed it, and decided I wanted to move back to Boulder and start something for myself. Great. Um, and so while well, you're starting here, Persona Wines, tell us a little about what you're you know, planning for what you envision, the size of the store, you know, your hours of operation, your typical yeah. customer you're going to be targeting, that sort of thing. Absolutely. So I've been looking for a specific space that I thought would be great for the community. I wanted it to be small scale. It's not going to be your general liquor store, run of the mill, anything like that. It's not going to be focused on college students whatsoever. My focus is on wine. That's what I've been learning about and training for for years. Um, so it's 
about a 960 square foot space uh, curated in a small selection of wines, spirits, craft beers, and really my target clients would be like neighborhood locals, young professionals, just anybody in the neighborhood who have an interest in wine as well. Great. And um, have you become familiar with the requirements of the Colorado Beer Code and the liquor rules yeah, for operating? Yeah, I've definitely done my research. Um, I'm still continuously learning and I'm trying to surround myself with, well, I am surrounding myself with professionals who are advising me in this new path that I'm taking as well. And tell us a little about how your employees, I assume you are going to have some employees other than your, you won't literally be there 24 hours a day. No, I will eventually have employees. Yes. <laughs> and, and tell us a little about how you're planning to train them in handling and selling uh, your products and, and what happens if they, if they don't comply. Yeah, sure. So everybody will need to be TIP certified within 14 days of the hire date. Um, I myself am already TIP certified for on-premise and off-premise. Um, and then I've also talked to Nathan Dewey from the RAR and I've joined that uh, membership. So all of those classes for fake ID training and whatnot, um, I'll be doing with him. And then just your general ID checking, we'll, we'll ID every single person, no matter what, no exceptions. And also obviously not selling to anybody that's visibly intoxicated and just trying to comply with and will be complying with what the standards are in the Boulder community. Great. Um, part of this uh, procedure here, one of the things that, that you need to show is that the Persona wines would serve the needs and desires of the neighborhood. Um, tell us a little about why you think this is a good spot for the, for the shop. Well, I wanted this location specifically because I like the, that neighborhood. I don't think that there's a lot of um, retail wine shops or liquor stores specifically in that space. There's a lot of residencies. And I think that supporting small local businesses in general within the Boulder community, people wanna participate in that. And I wanna be a part of it. Great. Um, and who did you use to uh, perform your, your um, well, your neighborhood petition? Oh, I, I used Liquor Pros. I was um, in contact with Sylvie the whole entire time. Okay, and and I understand Carol Johnson is here to speak on behalf yeah. um, of the the survey. So, but I guess before we get into that, um, I'd like to offer if the board would like to ask any questions of uh, of Sarah. Are there any questions for Sarah from the board? Not seeing. I, one question I guess I have is I'm sorry, is um, it looks to me like it's something similar to the, the West Pearl liquor store is that, is that something you're you're, you're thinking about the uh, there's kind of concept? there's west end um there's the west end wine shop right yeah there's that and yeah then there's well there's also daedalus too well, well, okay but, but the but that's similar to what you're looking to offer um sort of the west end wine shop is um much farther away from me i think that's closer to like no but i mean it's a type of business anyway Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. So, uh, and, and, and understanding to the importance of, 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 uh, of protecting the at-risk community from uh, the, the sale of alcohol, which you'll be doing. Oh, absolutely. That's why I've already been in contact with Nathan and we're working on all of, the, all of that and all those procedures. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, Thank you. Uh, my name is Paul Struziaro. Is this the time for public comments? Not yet, Mr. Struzio, please. Um, okay. We'll announce that. All righty. Any other questions from any board members? All right, not seeing any. Um, Mr. Conrad, you may proceed. Great. Well, let's get uh, let's get Carol Johnson up to talk about the, the neighborhood survey. Carol, you're here? Yes. Good afternoon. Great. It's nice to Meet you face to face. <laughs> yes, you as well. <laughs> um, so can you describe uh, what, what your business does? Certainly, Liquor uh, Licensing Professionals pre uh, prepares uh, the petitions for liquor licenses and marijuana licenses. We also do the uh, liquor license, the tips training as well. Um, and we were uh, hired to do this particular 
petition. Great. Um, can you describe how you, the process of circulating the petitions and, and what the results were? Certainly. Uh, we are a neutral petitioning company. We do not guarantee the results. We try to start the closest areas uh, for businesses and residents and work our way out. We had two surveyors work on this job and we worked three sequential days, December 6th, 7th and 8th. Uh, from those days, we made attempts at 96 businesses and 410 residents for a total of 506 attempts. Uh, from that, we obtained 101 signatures. 97 in support and four in opposition. Uh, the breakdown for that was 44 uh, business signed in support and two in opposition, and 53 residents signed in support and two in opposition. The reasons stated for the opposition, one gave no reason, no, excuse me, two gave no reason, one considered it a conflict of interest, and one was concerned about the location. There were 34 who declined to sign, 15 too busy, 11 who do not sign petitions or surveys, seven not interested, and one with no reason. There were 25 who were not uh, qualified. 12 of those were businesses that did not have an owner or manager present. 10 were under 21, and three were non residents. Uh, if you consider the two reasons that uh, may be considered invalid or, in, or irrelevant, I'm sorry, I can't talk today, uh, for needs and desires, that would actually bring the survey up to um, 97 in support for 98% and two in opposition for 2% for a total of 99 signatures. And I'd be more than glad to answer any questions you have. Great, thanks so much. The, does the board have any questions they'd like to ask? Any questions? Not seeing any. All right, uh, Mr. Conrad, you may proceed. Uh, that's uh, that's it from our uh, from our end. So uh, you can you can move to the next item. Great, um, Council Wit would now be a good time for Mr. Struzio. Yeah, I think normally we ask for public comment at the very beginning of each item, but that's I think in this instance we could open it up to to Mr. Struzio um, if you would like. And then yeah. have the board comment back on or ask any questions or anything if you want. Mr. Struzio, if you would like to um, present any items you may have for this agenda item. Okay, uh, and thank you. It's Struziaro. I know it's 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 definitely a tongue twister. Uh, I am a resident. And I actually live almost across the street. I'm at the corner of Twenty Third and the entrance into Whittier Square. I own a condominium there. And, and I did sign the petition that, so that I'm part of that 96% support. My only question to the, and I'm not sure if this is more of a zoning or a, or a Boulder police issue is, um, you know, with liquor stores, you, you, you always, it, at some point in time, attract the wrong element. And, and in this case, I just want to be sure that, you know, we have steps in place to, uh, if, if, you know, there is any increase. Could, in could, I just add, could I just interject here and ask that Kristen have him sworn in? <clears throat> Thank you. I was trying to yeah. jump in. <laughs> Sorry, okay. I thought it was a public comment, but you're actually a party in interest. So yeah, we'll have you sworn in. Certainly. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I didn't want to cut him off too, but I needed to jump in. Um, so, uh, Mr. Uh, Struzario, yes. um, can I get you to please state your name, spell your last name, and give us your um, physical address to be able to determine um, your location in response to this uh, sure. proposed premises to sure. determine it's, a party of interest? It's Paul Struziero, last name is S-T-R-U-Z-Z-I-E-R-O, and my address is 2280 Spruce Street, apartment B, Boulder, 80302. Okay. In looking at a diagram, I am determining that you are within the neighborhood boundaries as a uh, person of interest. Can I get you to uh, please repeat after me? I, sure. state your name. I, Paul Struziero. Do you swear or affirm? Do you swear. That the comments I am going to be making? That the comments I am going to be making? To the Beverage Licensing Authority? To the Beverage Licensing Authority? Are true and correct. Are true and correct. Thank you. Okay. Um, I also should mention at this time too. I'm also on the uh, board of directors for the uh, Whittier Square uh, Homeowners Association. 
but I am speaking on behalf personally, not on behalf of the board. So as I mentioned, my only concern is that, you know, in, in some instances, and, and I grew up in the city up in Boston, when where there's liquor stores, there's typically an increase in crime. So I just want to be sure of, of a couple of things that, that uh, you know, we have some, some form of uh, procedure in place that uh, if, if there is an increase in crime that we, we have access to more police and patrols and the other element, and I unfortunately, I just had an experience where a homeless person broke into my garage and, and stole a bike. But, uh, you know, I just want to make sure that that does not increase the instances of homeless people in this neighborhood, because uh, where Mrs. Barnes is putting her liquor store is, you know, it's right next to Scratch Kitchen, but it's also in, in the middle of a neighborhood uh, on, on both sides. So I, you know, that's my concern. Do, do I have the opportunity to respond or is this a question to the board or? Um, yeah, go ahead, please respond, Mr. Conrad. Yeah, I mean, I would just, I, certainly valid concerns. I, I would make clear that I think what Ms. Barnes is, is proposing here, it's not a, it's not a Boston Packy. Uh, it's a, it's a, uh, you know, like the West End wine shop, I think it's a little bit of kind of a higher end facility. I, I would not imagine that this kind of place is going to attract a lot of uh, crime or any of that sort of thing. Um, the experience, I think, of these sorts of wine shops in Boulder, like West End Wine Shop or, or uh, the one in North uh, Boulder, um, I'm blanking on the name, but I think those kind of places, it's not a, it's not a shop that, you know, sells cheap vodka uh, and that sort of thing. So I, I think the concern might be more valid for a certain type of liquor store. And that's, that's not really what we're talking about here. Um, I also think that it's, obviously we can't really comment on what police uh, options would be available. That's, that's per the city's own procedures. So, um, but certainly I think Ms. Barnes made clear that she's, she knows how to, to, to run a good uh, business and, and uh, uh, intends to try to keep it sort of a high-end facility. All right, thank you, Mr. Conrad. Um, Steve? Uh, question for, for Mr. Shuziero. Um, I'm equally as distant to the location as you are. Did you have any uh, problems with the previous uh, 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 retail liquor, or liquor store that was there before? Mr. Struzier? Uh, yes. Um, you, you know, I almost have to plead a little bit ignorant on that because we had bought, we purchased this place several years ago, but the first two years we rented it, we're now doing occupying it. We don't rent it anymore. So I personally did not have any experience. I remember the liquor store that was there, but I never had any experience because I wasn't living on premise. Because this one looks to me to be like it's less of a liquor store, more of a, a beer and wine store. Uh, so, and, and, and I don't recall any, any, well, there actually, there were some issues with, with, with the previous licensee, but it had less, had more to do with their operation than it had to do with problems brought about into the neighborhood. So, um, I just wondered if you had had any experience with it. Clearly, you had no, I, you no, I didn't. And, and like I said, I did sign the, the, uh, the permission waiver. I, I have no issue with it. I'm a fine wine drinker myself. I just want to be sure that if a situation occurs that we have steps in place to, to handle it. And, I, and, and I, I'd asked the licensee before uh, um, if she was prepared to address the issue with regards to the uh, at-risk community. And I think that's who you're speaking of when, you, when, you're, when you're talking about uh, a concentration of people who come close and they do live at, <laughs> they actually live immediately in the burned out building behind me. Uh, and, and uh, uh, that's a, a problem altogether. And they actually have taken a ladder and climbed up over my neighbor's uh, 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 wall to, to get at their bikes. Uh, and so uh, it's, a, it's a problem. Uh, I'm, I, I, I personally think that this licensee uh, applicant is, is uh, going to be able to uh, uh, protect us um, uh, as best that she can. And, uh, um, and, and, and I just wanted to that's all I had, but uh, you, you're now, Ms. Ms. Barnes, Barnes you're, you're hearing now that, that someone else besides, is, is, it's, a, it's a concern in the neighborhood anyway. Yes, and, of and, course. Yeah, and 
I think you're 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 aware of it. Yes, absolutely. All right, great. Well, thank you, Mr. Suzario, for your comments. Uh, Mr. Conrad, did you have any other items you wanted to present? Uh, just a, a quick final summary. I, I think the application is in order. I think Sarah is a person, obviously, I, I find obvious of, of great character. And, and um, with her experience, I think she's going to do a really good job with this. Uh, and, and um, you know, I love the idea of supporting a new small business. It's not a chain. It's not you know, she doesn't have 20 other locations. This is this is her dream to operate this um, and her baby, as she said. So, uh, and, and I think it's pretty clear that the neighborhood does uh, does desire it, you know, the, the issues we discussed notwithstanding. So uh, I uh, would strongly support the issuance of this uh, license and, and I thank you for your time and consideration. Great, thank you. At this point, we'll close for deliberation. Is there any discussion, any motions? I'm I'm ready to make a motion right now, but I also would um, have everyone bear in mind that Ms. Barnes um, was working at a restaurant in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. I used to live in that neighborhood, and yeah. I think that she would be pretty well uh, equipped to deal um, with some of of the type of people we deal with here in Boulder. So I would make a, a motion to approve this new um, liquor store um, off premise license. Member Carr will second that. Great. All in favor, say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Wallace, aye. Member Roberts, aye. Member Carr, aye. I also see she used to live near Little Little Little, little Cream. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I, sure I know did. you got to bring some Leo's bagels back next time, all right? I'm actually going back in a couple of weeks. I'll bring some bagels for you guys. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Conrad and Miss Barnes. Uh, license approved. Thank you so Congrats. much. Thanks. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Appreciate it so much. All right. Would we like to try for agenda item number two again? You yes. try to wake up Officer Denning again? Certainly, I'll call it again. Agenda okay. item number two matters from the Boulder Police Department, Officer Denning. Good afternoon. My uh, video on my laptop at home is not working, so I'll be off video. Um, apologize for being delayed today. Um, I don't know about where you're at, but here in Superior, the temperature just dropped about 35 degrees uh, in a couple of minutes. Um, so it's coming. Um, Officer Denick, my lights are starting to flicker. So yeah, it's yeah, the, the, wind, the wind gusts picked up uh, all our patio furniture blew off the patio and um, it was a painful trip out in the cold. But uh, um, anyway, I don't have anything. Um, I, 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 I'm assuming that our the retreat date is still holding on January 11th. Um, and I have a list of uh, things to discuss for the retreat um, and uh, that's about it. Um, I, I'm starting to wrap up my year in uh, stats. Uh, um, fortunately, we I'm took in about 400, uh, almost 500 less uh, fake IDs this year versus 2021. Um, so, although it's still a very active year for that, um, we uh, we're trying to get um, some other compliance checks scheduled. Uh, we've had been having some issues with scheduling and trying to get availability. Um, of course, around this time of year is always tough anyway, but. Uh, um, and I, I don't know, some of you probably remember, but I, um, we kind of teamwork this between me and Officer Jignac, the uh, marijuana officer, but uh, we're also tasked with uh, enforcement of the tobacco um, realm. So um, we had to finish, spend a fair amount of time um, on some of those issues. And uh, so, 
that that is also part of our duties. Uh, we, we, we try to teamwork those a little bit um, as they come up. And lately they've been kind of more, somewhat more of a focus for our compliance checks um, based on time and availability um, and, and limited operatives. So anyway, um, does anybody have anything for me? Doesn't look like we have any questions from the board, but <clears throat> thank you, Officer Denning, and uh, thanks again for all you do. So we're the uh, January 11th is still the date for the retreat, right? Okay. Yeah. And I guess I can wait on a confirmation for a location. I don't know if you guys have it yet, but uh, I'm sure Kristen will get that out to me as soon as we know. So bat down the hatches, sir. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be an interesting uh, next 24. Uh, 30, 30 hours or so. Um, they're saying this is a generational event. So, uh, which which generation? <laughs> yeah, Steve, you're safe. Don't worry. You're. Uh, I'm sure you've seen this before. I've seen it before. I've seen I've seen the forty below. Oh man, we're fair, we're Fahrenheit meets Celsius. Yeah, that's Arctic well, weather. We're making obviously we're making preparations. We we will probably have people that need our assistance and um, that need to get in and out of the cold, and so you know making preparations for shelters, things like that. Uh, that's been going on all day. So, well, we'll thanks for every, thanks for everything you do for us. All right, well, you guys, uh, I'll hang around uh, and hope everybody listening's got to have a merry Christmas. All right, resuming our agenda items is agenda item number nine, <clears throat> public hearing and consideration of an application filed on October 4th, 2022 from Creature Comforts LLC, doing business as Creature Comforts, 1647 Pearl Street, Unit 2, Boulder, Colorado, 80302. Jess Liu as owner with a business mailing address of 565 Timber Lane, Boulder, Colorado, 80304 for a new beer and wine type liquor license. Thank you, Kristen. Um, Ms. Liu, will you be uh, represented by council today or will any other members here be giving any testimony? No, I think I'm the last one standing. <laughs> but you yes, are. I will. Look at the member <laughs> list. <laughs> um, all right, so we'll get you sworn in and then I'll read the proceedings into the record. Great. Thank you, Chair Califano. Would you please state your name? I, spelled, Jessica Liu, spelled L-I-U. Uh, can you also give us your um, address, please? Oh, um, mailing or business home. Uh, whichever you prefer. Oh, six, uh, 1647 Pearl Street, Unit 2, um, Boulder, Colorado, 80302. Now can I get you to raise your hand, please, and repeat yeah. after me? <laughs> That's OK. I state your name. I, Jessica Liu. Do you solemnly swear or affirm? Do you solemnly swear or affirm? That the testimony you're about to provide. From the testimony, testimony I'm about to provide. The beverage licensing authority. The beverage licensing authority. Is true and correct. Is true and correct. Thank you. And do you also swear or affirm that the premises was posted by the t for the legal 10 day posting requirement? I do. Thank you. Great, thank you. And um, since you're not represented by counsel, I will go ahead and read the proceedings into the record. All right, this is a public hearing before the Beverage Licensing Authority of the City of Boulder to determine whether or not the application of Creature Comforts LLC doing business as Creature Comfort um, for a, a new beer and wine license shall be granted or denied. This hearing is conducted pursuant to the laws of of the state of Colorado and the rules of the Beverage Licensing Authority of the City of Boulder. The purpose of this hearing is to receive information, data, and testimony by interested parties in order to enable this authority to make the findings and to reach conclusions required to be made by state law as to whether or not the license applied for shall issue. Interested parties are the applicant, um, 
residents of the neighborhood under consideration and the owners and managers of a business located uh, in the neighborhood under consideration. For purposes of determining who is an interested party at this hearing, the neighborhood under consideration is the neighborhood previously defined by the authority. The authority shall make a final determination of the affected neighborhood prior to determining whether the license shall be issued. Any interested party may speak to the question of the neighborhood designation as well as other information relevant to the granting or denial of the application. A record is being made of these proceedings. Those who desire to be heard shall identify themselves uh, by stating their name, spelling their last name, and stating their pertinent address. They shall also be sworn in by the board secretary. Is there any ex parte communication or conflict of interest from any uh, members on the board? Member Califano, no. Member Absalom, no. Member Wallace, no. Member Roberts, no. Member Carr, no. Great. All right, Miss Lou, you may proceed. Okay, great. Um, well, good afternoon. Thanks so much for um, this opportunity. My name is Jess Liu, um, and I'm the owner of Creature Comforts LLC, um, which is the licensed applicant for a new beer and wine license for a space located at 1647 Pearl Street, um, Unit 2. Um, I think it is well known as the former Pharmaca space um, on Pearl Street. Um, while Creature Comforts is my first hospitality business, I have been in the food and beverage industry for over 15 years, beginning my career essentially as a waitress at a fine dining restaurant in Tokyo, and then quickly moving um, to New York City where I took on a management role um, and was there where I was tip certified as well as responsible, ended up gaining the responsibility for beverage ordering, ordering and inventory. Um, it's hospitality has been a long-standing passion of mine. And while I explored other areas of the F&B industry uh, over the past few years, um, it's something I always knew I would come back to. So like Sarah, um, this is my baby. It's a dream that's multi-decades in the making. Um, and I just feel very privileged to have the opportunity to be creating a space in which I can welcome the community and create a comfortable and safe space. I really it is my hope that um, to have the privilege and also bear the responsibility of serving beer and wine in that space. Um, the attention, intention of um, Creature Comforts is primarily to provide a coffee shop environment, um, a third space, um, and the food service is casual with an internal walk-up counter where orders are placed. Um, all of the menu is, will be developed through um, wholesale partnerships with small businesses such as local bakeries and um, creameries um, and farms and also I hope breweries and wineries um, and another goal of mine is to in those efforts in partnering with smaller businesses like myself is to highlight minority and women-owned businesses where possible. Um, I believe my application is well supported by the petitioning efforts I conducted. Um, which I personally conducted over several days earlier this month and also had the moral support of my husband and one and a half year old one chilly morning around Goss Grove. Um, it was an incredibly encouraging experience as the results show 100% in favor, 144 signatures collected, um, 74 residents and 70 businesses. Um, I have more to say, but I don't know when I should stop. So I'll keep on going. Um, I, to share, I think, you know, I am currently, I think one thing that is probably a question is when will this business be open? Um, I have actually, that is unclear. I have been under the city of Boulder's planning and development review process for over a year now. Um, however, I am hopeful that my permit review shall conclude by the end of this year, if not early next year. Um, so at present, I am the only employee. Um, however, upon opening, I do anticipate having five employees, um, one of which will be myself, three of them full-time, two of them part-time. Um, as far as operating hours, my land use permits me, my use review, per, zoning review permits me um, 
to be open from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, but in reality, I actually, my intents and purposes of this space is to be more of an all day cafe. So with true operating hours, like around 9, 9.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, the 10 p.m. is really just there to help in the event that uh, a private a private party or event has been booked, which will always conclude by 10 p.m. Um, I think, let's see what else. I have an indoor seating capacity of 50 um, with an occupant load from the building department of 48 and an outdoor seating capacity of 16. Um, the patio is designated by metal fencing. Um, so the area in which beer and wine and the exterior is permitted is clearly marked and defined. I think one thing that in addition to having staff constantly monitoring the exterior, um, one thing that I know is to, or believe is to my advantage in the space is these three large windows um, along the 17th street side that I will be opening up to create basically transparent visibility to the exterior patio. Each of the windows measures six feet wide by eight and a half feet tall. So for all intents and purposes, the 17th stride 17th Street side of the premise, which is where the patio exists, um, is fully visible from the interior as well. Great, thank you very much. Um, are, is there any questions for Ms. Lou from the board? Not seeing any. All right, Ms. Lou, is there anything else you'd like to present to us? I don't think so. I actually did have one question um, and I may yeah. have missed it in the packet. Are you TIP certified? Um, I completed a TIPS training with John Vallier Wednesday, December 7th. So I am awaiting my results. Uh, okay. Member Califano, she, uh, yeah, that was included in the packet, an email exchange between her and uh, Mr. Vallier, so. Got it, missed that part. Apologies for that. Um, all right. Um, at this point, if there's nothing else uh, that you'd like to present, we will close for deliberation. Um, is there any discussion, any motions? I mean, I'll make, I'll make a discussion point of that. I'm just wildly impressed that this was all done by Ms. Lou on her own and her family. Um, there's so many times that attorneys and, and other people are involved, and it just proves that you really care about the community that you're coming into. Um, and, and we we acknowledge that. And I personally acknowledge that and I appreciate it. Um, the policy is fantastic. Um, I, I see no reason not to make a motion here, but I'll let anyone else discuss if they'd like. I would make a second for that motion. And yes, I was very happy to see in your policy that you put Descriptions in terms of intoxication, what you might see, examples. I think that's very helpful for um, your future staff. So, and holds them a little more um, liable and responsible for those things. Um, but yeah, so we've had a second. Um, all in favor, say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Wallace, aye. Member Roberts, aye. Member Carr, aye. All right. Thank you very much. I think it also goes to show how easy our procedures are if you read the instructions. Yeah, that's I, a valid point. <laughs> I just also want to say that I would not have been able to make it through this process without the help of Kristen. Um, so she has been, I think we started this back in April when I was asking some questions and um, having gone through the PNDS process, which is a little trickier. Um, to say the least, I think that it is, was not, would not have been possible without the support of Christian and the availability of the clinics and that type of guidance. So thank you. I think the city of Boulder is very fortunate to have the staff that it has. Kristen is a godsend. <laughs> well, thank you. I do appreciate that. And it was my pleasure. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll go now. Have a wonderful holiday and afternoon. Bye-bye. Stay warm. Thank you. All right. Continuing off of that, we will have agenda item 10, matters from the assistant city attorney. Um, I don't have anything I know we're going to talk about um, 
the retreat coming up. And so I have a few comments about that, but nothing uh, undermining. Happy holidays, everybody. Okay, agenda item 11 matters from the licensing clerk. There are no neighborhood boundary settings for applications to be heard at the January 18th, 2023 Beverage Licensing Authority hearing. And there are no expected administrative processing for liquor license transfer applications for the month of December, in addition to the one that was heard at hearing today. There are also no breweries, wineries, <coughs> distillery requests for the local licensing authority input for the month of December. And the special event liquor permits list was provided to the authority members in their packet. And I do believe that there was an uh, informational item from um, licensing manager Chang Garris regarding the beverage licensing authority retreat that was going to be added in. Thanks, Kristen. So we did include a draft agenda for the BLA retreat. Um, as you all know, the retreat is scheduled for January 11th. It will occur in person at the Brenton building, which is where our licensing offices are located. It's at 1136 Alpine Avenue in North Boulder. Um, we included the draft agenda so you all could take a look at that and provide any feedback. If there's anything you'd like to change, add, remove, adjust, please let us know today and we'll, we'll get that finalized and um, put together a, a packet for your review prior to that retreat. Does anyone have any feedback for us on the draft agenda that was provided? When did you, I'm not seeing a, the draft. When was it sent? Same, it's at the very end. In the packet, okay. yeah. It Put is. It here. Last it's, thing. Yeah, it's page 217. Well, I stopped mm -hmm. on page 216. <laughs> <laughs> At least you got through 216. <laughs> um, if it's okay, Kristen, the one thing I would like to add, um, I had mentioned this previously, is maybe having a line in there about um, any changes the board would like to make or staff would like to make related to either our procedures or anything else related to our processes. Um, just giving space for any thoughtful changes? I have a couple of suggestions personally, so. Yeah, I, I have a suggestion. I thought we had talked about this too, is just um, kind of doing a revision of the petitioning and the language around the petitioning. Um, I know that we had discussed that um, over two hearings ago, um, mm -hmm. um, just kind of going over and, and codifying that language as to what the rules would follow in terms of and making sure it's clear because i think what was happening is we had people doing petitioning um on their own in different cases i think what i'm i'm hearkening back to is um the one over at the res um and thinking about some of the things we learned from that i might have to go back and, and look at that hearing and think about some of the things i had some notes but i i have to go back and look I think we learned a lot um, over that period. So um, I might need a, I might need a 24 hour period to send some notes if that's okay, at least. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you want to send those directly to me, I'll make sure to incorporate them in the revised agenda. Thanks, Kristen. Yeah, sure. I would, would just a reminder that don't, whatever you do, don't, don't CC us all. Thank I you. will not do that. Uh, not that I'm, I'm interested in hearing, but I don't want to have anybody come after all of my emails. I say some of the stupidest things. Um, and that goes for any members of the board. If you do have um, some feedback, if you want to take, let's say, um, through January 2nd to review the draft agenda and send any feedback, we will be finalizing um, the agenda after the holidays so please send those revisions directly to me and we'll be sure to incorporate them and then the only other thing i was going to mention is we are going to order some food for the retreat uh, we'll probably do some sort of box lunches we are thinking something along the lines of panera snarfs or noodles and company so if you have any strong 
thoughts on where you'd like to eat dinner, please let me know. Um, otherwise, we'll just pick a place and circulate a menu and um, collect everyone's orders prior to the retreat. That was my only comment. There was no refreshments mentioned. <laughs> we will definitely be having refreshments. I know it's going to be a long meeting. We want to make sure you all are, have what you need to make it through. So, About how long um, should I expect? We have it scheduled for four hours. OK. Four hours, that's nothing. <laughs> I vote for eggnog. <laughs> I think what, all what of- What did Officer Dennis say? Eggnog. 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 <laughs> this is past the 12th night. That's true. Is it frowned upon if it's it has rum in it? Um, we do yeah. not have a license for that location. <laughs> I mean, we could apply for one, can't we? I know somebody. A temporary. Um, There's no conflict of interest there. <laughs> we should probably stop this conversation altogether. Maybe <laughs> Council Whittle jump in and say. I, I didn't say what I said. <gasps> Not on the record. Or, or, or I don't recall. <laughs> I don't recall what I said. Joking aside, you know, this is a recorded conversation. Yes. All right, we have one more item, which is just the fact that the liquor license renewals uh, list for March 2023 expirations were also provided in the packet. The last agenda item we have for this evening and for this year is agenda item number 12, matters from the chair and members of the authority. Anybody have anything? Mike, you're lucky. I'll be safe and more. Or member car. Why am I lucky? No, member uh, car. Lucky. <laughs> I was like, I, we got out of here before five thirty. So I was, I was I ready. Full confidence. I had full confidence. I have uh, nothing other than a very merry Christmas and happy holidays, to everyone. Um, I appreciate everyone on this board and uh, especially our city staff. Um, thank you so much for making these so streamlined. And um, yeah, it is dropping out there. So everyone, be careful and stay safe. Stay safe and have a joyous holiday. Stay warm. Don't forget layers. Yep. I remember, <laughs> I'll make <laughs> remember Mike, a tree you have is the kind of tree you always remember. That's right. <laughs> I, I don't know how I'll ever forget it. <laughs> um, I'll make a motion to, to a yeah, okay. I'll second that motion. Remember Absalom's a second. All in favor say aye. Remember Califano aye. Remember Absalom aye. Remember Wallace aye. Member Roberts, aye. Member Carr, aye. We are adjourned at 5.04 p.m. Thank you all. Have a happy holiday. Thanks. Happy holidays, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Thank you.